The Garland of Hoth is first recorded in the 1530s by Archbishop Allen of Dublin and he tells the story of how St Nesson, who lived on Ireland's Eye, was sitting one day reading his Gospel book when the devil appeared. Nesson took up his Gospel book and he flung it at the devil, propelling him off the island into the cliff face here below us. The devil hit the cliff face with such force that he split the rock and it's said that an image of his face is also in the face of the rock. The book then fell into the sea and later was miraculously recovered by local fishermen and brought into the village of Hoth, where it was used by the locals uh, to swear oaths upon. The name is a little peculiar. Archbishop Allen described it as the Cahirlaur, or the four books of the Gospels. But in the 17th century, the term garland meant the most important or the most precious thing. So we think that's how it came to have its name. It was the greatest treasure of Hoth. And then by the late 17th century, it had come into the Library of Trinity College where it's documented in our library catalogue. As you can see, it's not in great condition. It's lost a lot of colour from the page. And then the terminals um, of the I and the N and the I, which are the three first initials, have this wonderful, what originally would have been probably quite bright yellow. We can still see traces of it. And this is quite evocative of manuscripts that were being made on the continent at the time, uh, which often had the use of real gold um, on them. And interestingly, with this page, uh, although it's now very faded, early colour reproductions of it suggested that it had a purple background. And again, that's something that refers back to continental art, where sometimes the pages of parchment were dyed purple with gold script on them. And they were particularly associated as royal manuscripts. So it was very interesting for me as an art historian to be able to ask the conservators and their analysis to try and reconstruct how might this originally have looked. Because we can't take any samples from the manuscripts, because they're far too precious for us to do that, we have to use instruments that are non-destructive or non-invasive, and we use them directly onto the manuscripts. Uh, we can't afford to have any damage occur, of course. And one of the more effective systems is Raman spectroscopy. Basically, we shine a light of a known wavelength, and the detector will look for the reflected light and that gives us an idea of the chemical structure of the material. And it's been very effective with these manuscripts. In, in the case of the Garland of Hoth, we've been able to identify that the yellow is all permanent, which was very commonly used as very bright yellow and an alternative to gold. We don't have any gold on these manuscripts. And in all cases, the blue has been indigo, or we assume it's woad, which was grown in the country at that time. But chemically, it's an indigo blue. The Garland of Hoth is an unusual size. It's quite large, but it's definitely smaller than the Book of Kells, which is known as a deluxe uh, manuscript. And it's uh, larger than the Book of Dimmer and the Book of Mulling, both of which are small pocket gospels. So they sit very nicely in the hands, whereas this one's slightly larger, so it has a bit more grandeur to it. <laughs> 